Today we're going to have a look at the 2016 higher level suspense question. As with all suspense questions, we are given a balance sheet. Uh, we are then given five errors that need to be corrected. And we are asked to prepare in part A to journalise uh, these corrections. Part B is to show the suspense account. Part C is to prepare a statement showing the correct net profit. Part D is to do the corrected balance sheet. And part E is a small bit of theory. So for part A, to journalise the necessary corrections, we're going to have to do some T accounts. We might just have a quick uh, bit of revision on T accounts before we start. With profit and loss stuff, we need to know that purchases have a debit balance and expenses have a debit balance. Sales and income have a credit balance. With balance sheet items, assets have a debit balance and drawings have a debit balance and liabilities and capital have credit balances. And then with bank and cash, we debit money that comes in and we credit money that goes out. And if we know this, it will help us to do our T accounts. So to start on our T accounts, the first entry says that coffee tables purchased on credit for 2,800 have been entered on the incorrect side of the creditor's account and credited as 1,800 to the equipment account. Well, because Sexton is a furniture retailer, when they buy coffee tables, they are uh, counted as purchases. So it says they've entered on the incorrect side of the creditor's account. So we're going to have to set up a creditor's account. Now, when you purchase something, you debit purchases and credit creditors. If they're entered on the incorrect side of the creditor's account, they would have debit creditors. And it also says creditors 1800 to the equipment account. So the credit 1800 to the equipment account. Now, when I do these, there's a couple of different ways you can do the suspense account. The way I do them is I put in their entries in black and our entries to correct those in red. And it's the red figures we're going to use to make up our journals. So far, these are the entries that they have put in. Now, these don't balance, so we're going to have to set up a suspense account because you can't enter, they couldn't have entered a one sided journal, so they must have put the other thousand as a credit into suspense balance the journal. Now that is incorrect, so if it's incorrect, to fix it, I'm just going to do the opposite. And now I'm going to do what they should have done. So when they purchased the coffee tables, they should have debited purchases and credited creditors. So I go over to the purchases account, and the amount was 2,800 euro, and I'm going to credit creditors for 2,000 800 euro. And that is the first one done. So to do the journals for this then, we're just going to take the figures in red for our journals. So if we go up to the top, the first thing I'm going to have is creditors. And that is going to be a credit balance. And we can just net these together. So it'll be 2,800 plus 2,800, which would be 5,600. The second part of my journal is going to be equipment. And again, I'm taking the red figure, so it's 1,800 of a debit. The next account I'm going to have is suspense, and that's going to be a debit of 1,000 euro. And the last one I'm going to have are purchases. And again, that it is going to be a debit of 2,800 euro. And now my credit side is 5,600 euro, and if I added my debit side, it's 5,600 euro, so that journal balances. And then you just put in a sentence saying effectively what you've done, so it's been correction of incorrect treatment of purchases included in equipment, or something along those lines would be fine. The second part of the question says, a delivery van which costs 2,400, and with a book value of 1500 was sold for cash uh, for 1350. <clears throat> this has been entered as 1530 on the debit side of the sales account and on the credit side of the debtor's account. Okay, well, what they did is they entered as 1530 on the debit side of the sales account. And again, that's going to go on back because that's what they did. 1530 on the debit side of the sales account and on the credit side of the debtor's account.
Okay, there'll be no suspense here as this journal balances is just wrong. First of all, it shouldn't have been a seat, uh, treated as a sale because um, they're a furniture store, so a delivery van wouldn't be a sale in the normal course of business. It would be a fixed asset. And it was sold for cash, so there shouldn't be any debtors. So this is completely wrong. So to fix this, and it's going to do the opposite, credit sales at 1530 and debit debtors at 1530. Now we're going to have to do what they should have done. So I'm going to have to open up a motor vehicles account. Uh, motor vehicles are an asset, so if the motor vehicles are reduced, uh, assets have a debit balance, so to reduce it, we're going to put in a credit 2,100 to reduce motor vehicles. When you uh, get rid of a motor vehicle or a fixed asset, you also have to take out the depreciation. So I'm going to have to take out the depreciation of the accumulated depreciation of the motor vehicle. Uh, and from the question, we can see that it costs 2,400. And the book value, it's now worth 1500 so it must have been depreciated by the difference of the two of those, which is €900. Euro. And accumulated depreciation has a credit balance, so to take it out, I'm going to debit the accumulated depreciation of €900. Euro. I got €1,350 in cash, so I'm going to have to open up a cash account. And I'm going to put money in, so I'm going to debit cash at 1350 and the last thing, I'm going to have to see whether I made a profit or loss when I uh, sold the vehicle. Well, the vehicle was worth €1,500, euro, had a book value of €1,500, euro, and I sold it for €1,350, so I've lost €150. Euro. So I'm going to have loss and disposal on motor vehicles, and a loss is going to be an expense, so it will be a debit balance. So for the journals then, my first entry is going to be sales and it's going to be a credit balance because again we're just taking the figures in red. The next entry is going to be debtors, which is going to be a debit balance of 1530. The next account, I'm going to have our motor vehicles and that's going to be a credit balance of 2,400. The next account, I will have our accumulated depreciation of motor vehicles, which is going to be a debit balance of 900 euro. My next account is going to be a cash account which will be a debit balance of 1350. And lastly, I am going to have a loss and disposal of motor vehicles, which will be a debit balance of 150. So again, it's going to check that these balance. So the credit side totals 3930, and the debit side totals 3930. And again, a simple sentence saying being correction of incorrect treatment of disposal of delivery van as I said. The third entry we're going to have a look at is insurance due 340 and rent prepaid to Sexton. So that's income. Uh, those rent prepaid to Sexton means that's rental income and expense of 460 were not recorded in the books. Okay, so these were not recorded in the books at all, so there'll be no suspense. We just have to put them in. So the first thing we're going to have is insurance. PL. Okay, there's insurance due of 340. Well, insurance is an expense which has a debit balance. So if there's more insurance due, we're going to have to put the 340 in here to increase that expense. So 340 will go there. And again, that's in red because these are our journals. The second thing we're going to have is rent receivable. This is due to us. Rent receivable and the profit and loss. Okay, well, rent receivable is a credit balance because it's income. Now, if someone's overpaid us income, they've prepaid uh, some of next year's income, it's going to reduce this year's income effectively by 460 euro. So I'm going to debit, debit rent receivable of 460 euro. Then we're going to have two balance sheet items for these. So we're going to have insurance due in the balance sheet. 
Well, any expense that's due is a liability. It's bad, and liabilities have a credit balance, so 340 euro will go in, in there as a credit. And the next thing we're going to have is rent receivable prepaid, and that will also go in the balance sheet. Now, rent receivable prepaid is bad because effectively somebody's overpaid us um, rental income and at the end of the year we owe some of that income back to them so that's going to be a liability at the end of the year of 460 euro so my first entry here is going to be insurance profit and loss and that's going to be a debit of 340 euro the next thing I'm going to have is rent receivable profit and loss. That's going to be a debit of 460 euro. And I'm going to have insurance due in the balance sheet. That's going to be a credit of 340 euro. And I'm going to have rent receivable prepaid in the balance sheet which is a credit of 460 euro. And again, just to check these balance, the credit side is 800, the debit side is 800, so they are balanced. And a simple sentence, something like being insurance due and rent prepaid omitted from the books. The fourth entry, it says that a credit note which mean sent to a debtor, so we're talking about sales returns here, for 620 euro have been entered in the day books as 260 euro and was subsequently posted to the incorrect side of the relevant ledger accounts. Okay, so we're talking about sales returns here. So we're gonna have sales slash returns. Some people set up a sales returns account, some people might just uh, include it with sales. And we're gonna have a debtors. Okay, when we sell something, you credit sales and debit debtors. So with returns, you do the opposite. We should um, debit sales and credit debtors. Now, they put those on the wrong side. Of, they put the return on the wrong side, so they would have uh, treated it as an actual sale. So they would have put, instead of uh, debiting sales, they would have they credited sales at 260, and they debited debtors for 260. What they should have done is put on the debit side of sales, they should have put 620. So to get from 260 of credit to 620 of a debit, we're going to have to put 880 euro as a debit in sales. And the same in debtors, we're going to have to credit debtors with 880 euro, which would leave us with a net balance of 620, which is what we wanted. So again, I'm just taking the figures in red because they are our figures or our adjustments. So for note, note number four, first thing I'm going to have our sales returns and that's going to be a debit balance of 880 euro and i'm going to have debtors which would be a credit balance of 880 sorry that should be debtors and that's going to be a credit balance of 880 euro and again, that obviously balances in a simple sentence like being correction of incorrect credit note to debtor on incorrect side of ledger or any sentence like that would be fine. Last note five says, Sexton return furniture previously purchased. And because this is a furniture retailer, these are purchases returns. Um, the returned furniture previously purchased on credit for 27,000. This was entered in the accounts as 37,000, so it was entered on the correct sides of the correct accounts, just the wrong amount. However, a credit note subsequently arrived from the supplier showing a transportation charge of 500 euro. The only entry made in respect of this credit note is a credit entry of 26,500 in the creditor's account. So that was a one-sided entry, and it was for the wrong amount. It should have been only 500. But first of all, we're gonna start off with doing what they did. So, it's, it says we have purchase returns and they're entered on the, on the correct accounts and um, on the right side, just the wrong amount. So with purchase returns, we're gonna have purchases slash returns and purchases always go with creditors. 
So when we purchase something, we debit purchases and credit creditors. So for the returns, we would do the opposite. We have credit purchases and debit creditors. So what they did is they debit purchases slash returns with 37,000 and the debit creditors with 37,000. Then they, when the credit note arrived, the only entry they made was they put a credit entry of 26,500 in creditors. So they put 26,500 in creditors. And again, because that was a one-sided journal, they must have put the other side into suspense. So they must have debited the suspense of 26,500. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do here is to tidy up the initial entry of 37,000. This 37,000 should be 27,000. So to get out of 27,000, I'm gonna debit purchases slash returns with 10,000, and I'm going to credit creditors with 10,000. This 26,500 is wrong, so I'm gonna get rid of that 26,500. So to do that, I'm going to debit creditors with 26,500, and I'm gonna credit suspense with 26,500. And now I'm gonna put in the correct entry for the transportation charge. So if there's a transportation charge or a restocking charge on purchases, returns, you just treat it like a purchase. So you just debit purchases and credit creditors. So I'm gonna debit purchases with 500 and credit creditors with 500. So to fill in these into the journals page, the first thing I'm gonna have is purchase returns. And that is gonna be a debit balance of 10,000 plus the 500, of 10,500. The second thing I'm gonna have are creditors. And again, that's gonna be a debit balance because the debit is bigger. So it's gonna be 26 and because these are the opposite side, I'm going to take away the 10 and take away the 500 to leave me with 16,000. And the last account I'm going to have is my suspense, which is going to be a credit of 26,500. Again, we're only taking the figures in red. And again, this general balance is 26,500 on the debit side and 26,500 on the credit side. And that's being correction of purchase returns error and transportation charge error. So that is the part A done, the journal is done. And once part A is done, the rest of the question is easier. So the next thing, part B, we just have to show the suspense account. So for the suspense account, I'm just gonna take the suspense figures from the journals. So I'm gonna go down through my journals here. I'm gonna highlight anything with suspense. So here in yellow, I'm gonna highlight the 10 to 1000, that's suspense. There's no suspense here. No suspense in note three or four, and the other suspense is 26,500 in note five. So they're the only two suspense figures. So now I'm gonna put those in to the suspense account. So the first one here is to do with creditors. So I can just write credit that's coming from creditors and the amount here is 1,000. And on the right hand side, I'm gonna put in the second one from North 5. And again, that's to do with purchase returns or credit. So I can put in purchase returns, creditors. And if I want, I can just put in the number of the journal that they are coming from. So here, beside creditors, I can put in one. And here in purchases, returns creditors, I can put in five, just to show what journal they're coming from. So when we have these in, then we have to see where my original difference is coming from. So obviously, as the debit side is smaller than the credit side, my original difference will go here. The original difference is the difference between 26,500 and 1,000 is 26,500. And now that suspense account is balanced. Part C asks us to, to prepare a statement showing the corrected net profit. So to do this, I'm going to go back to my journals again and take 
highlight all my figures that are profit and loss figures. So uh, these are both balance sheet purchases, the profit and loss figure. So I'm going to highlight that in green. Sales is a profit and loss figure. I'm going to highlight that in green. No. Um, loss and disposal is a profit and loss figure. Insurance P&L is profit and loss. Rent receivable P&L is profit and loss. Sales slash returns is profit and loss. Purchase returns is profit and loss. So these are all my profit and loss figures. Now up here at the top, I've done a little working to show that because with profit and loss stuff, I think the credit balance is good, it's income or sales, and I think with a debit balance is bad, it's an expense or purchases. So any when I go to do my statement of correct net profit, once I've highlighted all my P and L figures, anyone's on the right hand side, I'm going to add on, and anyone's on the left hand side, I'm going to take away. So first of all, here I'm going to start off with my original net profit uh, from the question. So my original net profit from the question, from the profit and loss balance from the balance sheet, is eighty-eight thousand. Now I'm going to add anything under any P and L items on the right hand side of my journal. So the first one, and I think the only one on the right hand side highlighted, is this sales here. So I'm going to add sales, because that's on the right hand side. And then less, I'm going to take away any ones on the left hand side, because they will reduce my profit or debit balance, their debit entries. So the first debit entry I have is purchases, and that comes to 2,800 euro. Second one I'm going to have is loss and disposal. That comes to 150 euro. The next one I'm going to have is insurance P and L, which is 340 euro. The next one. If I move down, rent receivable P&L, the debit balance, so it will reduce my profit. And that is 460 euro. I'm going to have sales slash returns. For 880 euro. And then the last one, purchases slash returns and that comes to 1,500 euro. Okay, so that leaves me with the corrected net profit of 74,400. So that is part C finished. Part D, we're asked to prepare a corrected balance sheet. So to do this, everything that should be left here now that's not highlighted are all balance sheet items. And with balance sheet items, if they're an asset, assets have a debit balance. So if they're an asset and they're the debit entry here, they're going to increase the asset. If they're an asset and they're on the credit side, they're going to reduce the asset. Similarly with liabilities, liabilities have a credit balance. So any liability on the right hand side or the credit side is going to increase my liability. And any liability with a debit balance is going to reduce my liability. So when you're doing the balance sheet, you start off with the balance sheet from the question and you make any adjustments that are necessary. So the first um, thing from the balance sheet, the first entry in, in the balance sheet is going to be our fixed assets and we're going to look at premises. So premises in the question are 630,000. There is no journal for premises, so they're still going to be 630,000. The depreciation of premises is zero, it's gonna stay zero, there's no journal for that, so premises will stay the same. Equipment, there was a journal for equipment, so equipment in the question is 56,000. There was a journal for equipment of 1,800, which is a debit balance, so that's gonna increase my equipment by 1,800. And again, I'm gonna highlight this in blue to show that I've used this figure. So that 1,800 euro is going to be added to equipment. So I'm gonna have 56,000, plus that 1800 euro. Um, 
and the depreciate accumulated depreciation of equipment there is no change to so that's, that's going to say the same as the question 26,000 motor vehicles motor vehicles in the trial in the balance sheet were 92,000 but there was a journal for motor vehicles so I'm going to go back to my journals now and it's a credit entry which is going to reduce my asset so that 2,400 is going to be taken away from motor vehicles so motor vehicles in the question were 92,000 and I'm going to reduce them by 2,400. Then there was a journal for accumulated depreciation of motor vehicles. When we sold the motor vehicle, we took out that depreciation. So if I go back to my journals and look at the accumulated depreciation of motor vehicles, that 900 euro is a debit balance. Now accumulated depreciation of motor vehicles is a credit balance. So the 900 of a debit is going to reduce that by 900 euro. So in the question is 26,000 and I'm going to reduce that by 900 euro for the depreciation I took out which gives me 25,100. That, like that equipment in the question was 12,000, not 26,000. Okay, current assets then. The first current asset I have is uh, closing stock, and that includes suspense. Okay, so closing stock in the, in the balance sheet is 98,000, but I have to take out the suspense. Now, if I go back and look at my suspense account, the original difference was a debit balance, so to correct that, I would have had it to credit suspense. Okay, so if I uh, credited suspense, which is included in stock, it would reduce my stock by 26,500. So my stock is going to be the 98,000 from the question minus the 26,500, which leaves me with 71,500. 98,000 minus 25,500. Debtors. Debtors in the question are 41,600. But again, there are a couple of journals for debtors. So I'm going to have to go back and look at my journals for debtors. The first one is 1530. And because debtors are an asset, that 1530 is a debit balance. That's going to increase my debtors. So I'm going to add on to 1530. And the second debtors is a credit balance of 880. So that will reduce my debtors because debtors are an asset. So the credit but the credit entry of 880 will reduce my debtors. So I'm going to take that away. So back to my balance sheet. In the question, it's 41,600. I'm going to add the debit entry of 1530 and take away the credit entry of 880, which gives me 42,250. Cash. Cash in the question is 2,400. And again, there was a journal for cash. So if I go back to my journals, it was a debit entry which will increase my cash by 1350 so i'm going to have 2400 from the question plus the debit entry of 151350 which leaves me with 3750 for cash on to creditors now so with the creditors the first entry in creditors is creditors of 72000 again there were a couple of journals for creditors so if I go back and look at these entries from my journals, the first one is 5,600. Now creditors have a credit balance, so the 5,600 is on the credit side, so I'm going to add that to my creditors. And the second entry for creditors with a debit balance of 16,000, which is going to reduce my creditors. So I'm going to start off with a 72,000 from the question. I'm going to add the 5,600, which is a credit entry, and I'm going to take away the 16,000, which is a debit entry, to leave me with 61,600. The bank overdraft is 22,000, and there was no journals for bank, so that's just going to stay as 22,000. And then I've highlighted these in grey because you don't want to forget these. These were the extra things that we created when we made our journals. We had rent prepaid, which is a liability. So if we go back to my journals, I can see here I've rent prepaid in the balance sheet of 460 euro, and then I have insurance due of 340 euro. So the rent was 460 and the insurance was 340. So the rent was 460 and the insurance was 340. And they're both liabilities, so they both go in creditors amounts due within one year. So that gets me down to my total net assets. Now I just have to finish off my balance sheet. I'm going to take my capital 
from the original uh, balance sheet, there's no returns for capital. So capital is going to be 700,000. And my net profit, I'm going to take from part C here, my statement of corrected net profit, which is 74,400. And my balance sheet balances 774,400. And again, if I go back to my journals, if I have a quick look down through my journals, I can see that all the figures have been ticked off or have been used. So all that's left then is part E, a small bit of theory. So the first part asks us explain compensating errors. So compensating errors. This is where an error on the debit side of one account is compensated by another error of an equal amount on the credit side of another account. So for example, a cash payment of 550 for repairs entered as 55 on the debit side of the repairs account and on the credit side of the cash account. And the second thing we have to explain are errors of original entry. So these are errors made in the books of first entry, which are then subsequently posted to the appropriate ledger accounts. For example, credit purchases from T Long for 223 entered as 322 in purchases book, and then subsequently they'd be posted uh, to the purchases account and to the creditor Long's account. I hope that helps. Thank you for listening again.